Welcome. You are watching Pro Forma, a channel that has hundreds of mind-blowing stories what are shockingly true. Stay with us to dive in the most incredible and twisted real-life scenarios. Sometimes real life is more bizarre than anything that could have been imagined. Today, we are going to tell you a shocking true story of a white teenage girl kidnapped by Yavapai tribe. How did she survive during five years living outside the normal society? And how she was brought back? You will find out in our video. Olive Oatman was born in La Harp in Hancock County, Illinois. She was the daughter of Mary Ann and Roy's Oatman, who had six kids and belonged to the Mormon community. The girl's family decided to relocate from Illinois to California in 1850, when she was 13 years old, with the goal of joining other Mormons in California. They afterwards joined a wagon train headed by Church of Jesus Christ. After traveling alone for four days in the direction of Tuscon, the Oatmans came across Native Americans. Surely belonging to the Yavapai tribe from the west, the group attempted to bargain for food and tobacco from the Oatmans. When Oatmans turned them away, the Native Americans killed Royce, Mary Ann, and four of the kids with clubs and axes. Lorenzo, one of the siblings, was left behind because he was assumed to be dead as well. However, Olive and her sister Mary were kidnapped by the Yavapai and brought to a village that was between 60 and 100 miles away. After arriving, the girls were handled like slaves and forced to gather firewood and go on food hunts. If they disobeyed, they were frequently beaten and treated poorly. That's crazy. Stay with us to know more about this shocking story. At the same time Lorenzo, after the attack, awoke to discover his parents and siblings dead, but he had not seen little Mary Ann or Olive. He made a dangerous journey in search of help. After a while, he arrived at a community where his injuries were treated, and later he returned to the place of attack to bury his family members to the one common grave. He decided to never give up looking for his sisters, who were the only ones still alive. Time flies quickly, and after a year passed living with the Yavapai, the girls were sold to the Mojave tribe for two horses. The Mojave were much more prosperous than the Yavapai and, luckily for the girls, were also more compassionate. Olive and Mary were taken in by the tribe's leader and treated as their own children. They were also given plots of land to farm and traditional Mojave clothes to wear. What's most stunning is that the girls also got tribal tattoos on their arms and chins, which was a traditional thing only for tribe members. Without the tattoo, the Mojave thought that no one would be able to reach the afterlife or be acknowledged by their ancestors. Then, between 1855 and 1856, a drought hit the land, leaving the Mojave with limited food and water. Mary, the other sister, died from starvation, leaving Olive alone with the Mojave. Olive became used to living with the Mojave when her sister passed away. She eventually integrated in with their culture, even starting to observe their traditions and adopting the clan name Och. Olive was so accustomed to her new surroundings, that she was hiding from the white railroad investigators, who traveled into the Mojave territory to trade and mingle with the tribe. Olive Oatman enjoyed her life as a tribeswoman for a few more years until her quiet solitude was broken. Suddenly, the rumor that a white woman was living among Indians, spread among military soldiers from Fort Yuma and they began to force Mojave tribe to give her freedom. After few refusals, the fear arised among tribe that white men can destroy them. So they took Olive to Fort Yuma. Her outfits, a skirt and nothing above the waist, was deemed inappropriate, so the officers there dressed her in Western-style clothes. Following her return to white society at the fort, Olive discovered that her brother Lorenzo survived the attack of Yavapai tribe that killed her family five years ago, and had been searching for her and her sister. Shortly, they happily reunited. At 28 years old Olive married John B. Fairchild, a cattle rancher. After relocating to Sherman, Texas, the couple adopted a little girl named Mamie. The family lived in Sherman until Olive's death on March 21, 1903. This tragical and at the same time amazing story became the inspiration for the book, Blue Tattoo. For her writing, novelist Margot Mifflin used real historical documents that were discovered after Olive's death. This story has since become legendary, spawning radio dramas, plays, novels, films and even Death Valley Days, which starred Ronald Reagan. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow for more.